Alright, so since the manual on the MI24P hind is a bit sparse and doesn't cover the countermeasures, today we're going to take a look at them, and we'll get into detail on how it all works. The hind can load up to 192 flares or chaff, incrementing in 64s. We can find the countermeasure stores on the root of the tail boom mirrored on both sides. Each store has three sets of 32 countermeasure slots. This is important because of the way countermeasures are loaded onto the aircraft. When you load chaff it will always take priority over flares, so with 64 chaff and 128 flares you will have chaff in set 1 and flares in sets 2 and 3. If we then loaded 128 chaff and 64 flares you will find sets 1 and 2 are loaded with chaff and set 3 with flares. This is important to remember when programming our countermeasures. Hopping into the cockpit you'll find the pilot's countermeasure release button on the left side wall under the mirror, the pilot launch SNARS button. I'd suggest binding this to your HOTAS. The rest of the countermeasures are controlled by the operator seat, so let's hop over. Besides our right knee you'll find the ASO 2V countermeasures programming panel, this is relatively simple. The first switch allows us to set the countermeasures interval, either 2 seconds or 4. Below that, Series. This defines how many times our program will repeat, either 4 times or 16 times. The two red lights below indicate when the left or right countermeasure store is running a program. We can select or turn off either the left or right countermeasure pods with the switches beneath that. At the bottom of the panel we've got the ACO sets selector. This picks which set of countermeasures we want to use. So for example if we loaded 64 chaff and 128 flares, selecting set 1, would give us chaff, while selecting sets 2 or 3 will allow us to drop flares, like explained before. We can also deselect all of our sets by using the middle position, effectively disabling the countermeasures system. Lastly we have the countermeasures push button, this is the operator's button to activate the countermeasures program. I'd recommend you bind the launch SNARS button as a minimum, but also set the selection button, sadly there's only binds for cycling through them all and not discrete positions at the moment. So an example, if we set the interval to 2 and series of 4 with both left and right selected and then the pilot or operator pushes their launch SNARS button, we'll see the lights come on, indicating the program is running, dropping 2 countermeasures every 2 seconds, repeating 4 times for a total of 8 countermeasures dropped over 8 seconds from our chosen set. Nice and simple. One thing to watch out for however is that once a countermeasure set has run out, You'll have no warning, nor will it automatically increment to the next set, so when you launch a program, double check the lights are on, and if not, increment manually to the next set and fire again. As a pilot you can check this by looking out your mirrors, or shouting at your operator. Unfortunately you cannot ask Petro AI to change the settings at the moment, however the operator cockpit control keybinds do work from the pilot's seat in single player. There is no total counter, so you're going to have to remember how many you've used and how many sets you've used to keep on top of it and avoid nasty surprises. Remember that chaff is loaded into sets before flares. Flares naturally are used against infrared heat seeking missiles, the aircraft doesn't have a flare dump button, so you should practice preemptively dropping flares into and on the way out of your attack runs to increase your survival chances substantially, as it can be difficult to drop enough flares after a launch. For using chaff, it's best to put the radar threat 90 degrees directly abeam left or right of you, which you can do with the assistance of the RWR radar warning receiver, which we'll look at next. The pilot has access to what I believe is an SPO-10 RWR on the right of the dashboard, same as you might find in a MiG-21. This primitive device displays detective radar waves from sensors found on the body of the aircraft. In the sensor we see a plane representing us viewed from top down. Each time a radar wave passes over our aircraft we'll hear a beep, and a light will flash to represent the rough direction to that radar. If you see two lights lit up at once, the source is roughly between both of the lights. When detecting multiple radars you'll see and hear beeps separated a little bit. Unfortunately this can get overwhelmed easily and works best in relatively quiet environments. We can set a night light filter by clicking on the top and rotating the cover. We can test that it's working by pressing the button beneath, showing us the lights and tone. When a detected radar is searching, we will hear a slow repeating tone.
When a radar is tracking us, we'll hear a slightly faster beeping tone. You do not get a launch warning however, so if you hear tracking it's best to assume that they're going to launch a missile and get to cover quickly. It cannot distinguish between airborne, ground or search radars, only really providing a rough direction to the source. Your operator, whilst they cannot see it, will also hear the beeping in their headset. I couldn't find a volume control, but if the beeps are annoying you, the power switch is found on the left, on the radio, and navigation panel on the far end, but of course this will also disable the system entirely. Lastly, there is one more defensive system at your disposal, one of the most effective. Your pilots and operators Mark 1 eyeballs. Be sure to frequently scan the area around you as a team and drop flares if you ever turn your tail towards the enemy to cover your collective asses. I hope you enjoyed and take care.